The opening chapter of Animal Farm establishes Farmer Jones, uh, the drunk, incompetent farmer who owns Manor Farm. In the opening scene of the novel, Farmer Jones is too drunk to remember to shut the pop holes, and the animals gather around to hear about the strange dream uh, that the respected boar Old Major had the previous night. Old Major is highly regarded by everyone on the farm, and they're keen to hear about the dream of someone so wise and benevolent. Orwell introduces a range of other characters in this chapter. Clover is a mare who takes great care not to harm the other animals as she walks into the barn. Uh, Boxer is the cart horse, an enormous beast who is as uh, strong as two ordinary horses put together. Benjamin is a taciturn and cynical donkey. As Orwell notes, he seldom talked, and when he did, it was usually to make some cynical remark. For instance, he would say that God had given him a tail to keep the flies off, but that he would sooner have no tail and no flies. Molly is the foolish mare who comes in chewing a lump of sugar that Farmer Jones gave her. Old Major talks to the animals about their miserable and squalid existence on the farm. They're exploited by Farmer Jones and work to death, receiving little or no reward for their labour. As Old Major notes, Let us face it. Our lives are miserable, laborious, and short. We are born, we are given just so much food as will keep the breath in our bodies, and those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength. And the very instant that our usefulness has come to an end, we are slaughtered with hideous cruelty. No animal in England knows the meaning of happiness or leisure after he's a year old. No animal in England is free. The life of an animal is misery and slavery. That is the plain truth. Old Major explains that the land is capable of supporting a great number of animals. The only thing standing between them and a more comfortable life is man. Man is the only real enemy we have. Remove man from the scene and the root cause of hunger and overwork is abolished forever. Old Major explains that man unfairly profits from their labour while condemning them to a miserable existence and a brutal death. But no animal escapes the cruel knife in the end. You young porkers who are sitting in front of me, every one of you will scream your lives out at the block within a year. Old Major dreams of a time when the animals will rebel and establish their own society where they'll profit equally from their labour. Is it not crystal clear then, comrades, that all the evils of this life of ours spring from the tyranny of human beings? Only get rid of man and the produce of our labour would be our own. Almost overnight we could become rich and free. What then must we do? Why work night and day, body and soul, for the overthrow of the human race? That is my message to you, comrades. Rebellion. During the speech, Old Major outlines the ideas that will eventually become the system of belief known as animalism. Whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend. And remember that in fighting against man, we must not come to resemble him. Even when you have conquered him, do not adopt his vices. No animal must ever live in a house or sleep in a bed or wear clothes or drink alcohol or smoke tobacco or touch money or engage in trade. All the habits of man are evil, and above all, no animal must ever tyrannize over his own kind. Weak or strong, clever or simple, we are all brothers. No animal must ever kill any other animal. All animals are equal. The chapter ends with a chorus of Beasts of England, a song that will eventually become an anthem for the revolution. The opening chapter of Animal Farm establishes important parallels between uh, the novel and the events that occurred after the Russian Revolution in 1917. The Russian Revolution was a result of numerous factors, uh, including centuries of oppression from the Tsarist regime, and like many other countries, Russia was undergoing a massive industrial revolution. Thousands of peasants flocked to the cities to work in factories where they received little pay and were victims of food shortages. Most of the people in Russia at the time were farming peasants. A very small portion of the population owned the majority of the land. It was unfair and the peasants believed that they should own the land that they worked on. This discontent is mirrored in the novel by the animals who live short and miserable lives under the rule of Farmer Jones. Farmer Jones is very much a representation of the brutal and uncaring Tsar Nicholas II who ruled Russia prior to the revolution in 1917. He was nicknamed Bloody Nicholas because of events like Bloody Sunday in which over a thousand protesters were killed when they marched on the Winter Palace, uh, basically in an attempt to improve working conditions. 
Old Major is a revolutionary voice among the animals. Uh, he's very much a representation of the philosopher and journalist Karl Marx, who outlined the concept of communism in the Communist Manifesto. Communism is the idea that exploited and discontent working classes will rise up and seize control, creating a classless society where there's common ownership of the means of production, such as factories and farms. In the novel, Old Major outlines an idea that will eventually become known as animalism, a political idea that the animals will rise up and take over the farm themselves, sharing the profits of their labour equally. Orwell was inspired to write Animal Farm by the Soviet Union's descent into tyranny. What started as a revolution to make a fairer society quickly became a repressive totalitarian regime. And when you think about the opening chapter, there's a real contrast between the optimism of Old Major's dream of a truly fair and classless society and what happens uh, in the final chapter of the book. The opening and closing chapters very much bookend or frame the farm's descent into tyranny. So what I'm going to do now is have a little bit more of a casual talk through this chapter of the book. And one of the important things that you need to do when you're uh, studying any kind of novel like this is, of course, to really read it closely and annotate it. Um, so you've hopefully got a copy of the book there. You've hopefully got a pen or some sort of highlighter and you're going to uh, join me in annotating this um, as we talk a little bit about chapter one. I guess one of the first things that I've underlined is uh, this chapter really does set up the uh, the neglect and the cruelty of Farmer Jones. And in that first paragraph there, the, the two things that I've underlined, the fact that he's too drunk, um, I've just underlined those two words, uh, and the way that he lurched across the yard, I think uh, those two quotes in particular help to uh, really illustrate the uh, neglect that... Um, Farmer Jones uh, shows towards the animals. And we know that uh, Tsar Nicholas II in Russia was an incredibly uh, neglectful leader who did uh, terribly foolish things like getting Russia into wars uh, that were tremendously unpopular um, and all of that sort of thing. So uh, I think in terms of George Orwell's writing style, he really favours, you know, he favours brevity and he sets up a lot of characters in this chapter in a very small number of words. He does it very concisely. I think there are very few words in this chapter to set up the characters, but they are very important words, and I'd like you to focus on those. And of course, I guess the next paragraph is really about setting up the character of Old Major, um, who's characterized, I think, in a very positive way. And the one thing that I did underline here are the words highly regarded, uh, because his, you know... Uh, He's highly regarded among the animals. Uh, they they listen to him, and uh, yeah, I, th I think that really helps to encapsulate that particular character. We do get a little introduction to a number of characters here. Um, so we get the the stout and motherly mare Clover. Boxer is really a crucial character in the novel, and ultimately one of the most tragic and heartbreaking parts of this book. Um, is the moment later and what happens to him. Uh, it's I seriously tear up a little bit every time I read that. Benjamin's also introduced in this chapter. And the quote that I've really underlined for Boxer, it's, it's quite a long one. Um, so you can sort of uh, cherry pick little parts of this uh, later on. Boxer was an, an enormous beast, nearly 18 hands high and as strong as two ordinary horses put together. A white stripe down his nose gave him a somewhat stupid appearance and in fact he was not of first rate intelligence, but he was universally respected for his steadiness of character and tremendous power of work. The next character who's introduced uh, is Benjamin. Benjamin's an interesting and very cynical character and in fact, that's the word that I underlined here, cynical. I, I think that Benjamin represents the type of people in society who have seen it all but before in terms of politics and who think it's no use getting involved in politics. It's no use trying because it's always going to be the same. And I feel a real degree of uh, frustration with Benjamin because he does, the character doesn't realize that all of this matters until far too late. And that moment, as he's, uh, if you, I'm sure, hopefully you've read the whole novel, but as he's uh, chasing after the van uh, towards the end of the novel is one of the most heartbreaking things. It is too late by then, definitely too late. Then we get the character of Molly. Uh, Molly, the foolish, pretty white mare who drew Mr. Jones's trap, came mincing daintily in 
chewing a lump, lump of sugar or really doesn't pull any punches with Molly. Uh, she has those ri- red ribbons in her mane. And Molly is very much a character who I guess represents the, the bourgeois or the upper middle class in Russia who were very sympathetic to the royals. They were very um, sympathetic to the landowners and the factory owners and the wealthy capitalists. And she because of the preferential treatment she receives from Farmer Jones, really does prefer his rule and, and disappe- disappears a little bit later in the novel. Uh, then, you know, we get the beginning of Old Major's speech. And throughout this quite lengthy speech, what I've done is I've highlighted a few phrases that I think are important and can help us write about his, his vision of a fair and equal society. That idea that their lives are miserable, laborious and short I think really helps to demonstrate how terrible things are for them that no animal in England knows the meaning of happiness or leisure after he is a year old and that their lives are and I quote misery and slavery and it was only a matter of time before uh, this one turned up I don't know if you can see my cat I guess probably the other really important idea here is the fact that uh, the farm is capable of supporting everyone uh, with a life beyond their imagining. Uh, Moving on, I guess, towards the end of this speech, um, there is a really, uh, I guess, evocative illustration of the cruelty that the animals endure. So um, Old Major points out that none of them escape the cruel knife um, in the end. I think that's a really great quote to illustrate the cruelty of Farmer Jones. And that line where he's talking to all of the pigs in front of him, all of you will scream your lives out at the block within a year. And that whole, the whole rest of that paragraph is really about the brutality, uh, the dogs um, when they grow too old, uh, being drowned in the river and all of those sorts of things. I think it's interesting and particularly when we look at later chapters in the book, the cruelty of the pigs versus the cruelty of Farmer Jones. There's something that seems to be infinitely worse about the pigs doing that to their own kind. And a little bit further down the page, I really like this quote. Never listen when they tell you that man and the animals have a common interest, that the prosperity of one is the prosperity of others. And I can't help but think about billionaires here not paying their fair share of tax uh, when I read this and being told that it's in the interests of society that they don't. Towards the end of his speech, there is a rather interesting uh, bit where he says, and remember, that in fighting against man, we must not come to resemble him. And of course, the great irony is every single one um, of the things that Old Major lists here, the pigs eventually end up doing. The chapter ends with singing Beasts of England, which really is that, that anthem of the revolution uh, about the golden future time where all of the animals... Uh, will be equal. It's a song of optimism. It's a song of, of rebellion. And little wonder that the pigs ultimately um, ban that um, much later in the novel. So that's chapter one. Again, I think it's a really crucial chapter because it sets up the cruelty um, of Farmer Jones and the way that he mistreats the animals. And it serves an important function in terms of framing this story, which is about the promise of rebellion and animal farms descent into tyranny. Now we're going to do some writing about the book. So rather than getting you to respond to comprehension questions, uh, I'm going to give you a single piece of writing on each chapter. Today, you're going to write a single paragraph in response to this topic. It is Farmer Jones, not Old Major, who sows the seeds of revolution. Do you agree? When you're responding to this question, I'd like you to use teal structure. Open with a topic sentence that explains your opinion on the topic. For example, you might write, although Farmer Jones treats the animals poorly, Old Major agitates the animals by calling for rebellion. Then go on to explain what you mean about both Farmer Jones and Old Major. And along the way, um, it's really important when you're writing about a novel like this to use short quotations from the novel in sentences of your own to support that discussion. And at the end, what I'm going to ask you to do is to close off your discussion with a sentence that links back to the topic. So you might write something like, While Farmer Jones' neglect and cruelty is unfair, Old Major is the catalyst for the revolution. Best of luck with your study of Chapter 1, and I'll catch you next time. The animals and this vision of an equal, perfect world. Hey, buddy.